He told her to bend over a chair with her buttocks raised. The petite, attractive 18-year-old woman refused. The unusually large, strong young man then physically forced her to assume the position and summoned two assistants to hold her down as she struggled to resist. He swung old thunder mightily, striking her buttocks, leg, and hip with the four-foot-long piece of wood. She momentarily broke her hand free and raised it to shield her body from the blows, and he struck her hand with old thunder, causing her to cry out that he had broken her hand. His helpers then pulled her feet up, raising her buttocks off the floor, and continued to beat her. She was crying the whole time, humiliated in a great deal of pain. When it was over, her buttocks were ble bleeding, her hand was too swollen and painful to use, and her face was stained with tears. He then ordered Jessica Smith to return to her classroom and resume her, study, her studies. Jessica's crime that day, she was late to school. Good afternoon, my name is Paula Flo. I'm the executive director of the national nonprofit organization, The Hitting Stops Here, a campaign for teaching kindness and respect in schools everywhere. This organization began in 2006 when I first witnessed a handful of teachers abusing our American everyone school children in the state of Georgia, a paddling abuse, state. And we urge everyone to get involved with this, with this battle. This is clearly child abuse. You're leaving big bruises on these kids' buttocks. You're giving them nightmares. They have, they're afraid to go to sleep. They lose self-esteem. They're um, afraid to go to school often. And uh, we have kids that are paddled for going up the wrong stairway for having shirt tails hanging out, for making low grades on test scores. We had a coach over in Mississippi that was paddling his basketball players for missing baskets. And he was really wailing on those kids. So well, this I is something that has been going on too long in America. In the Searcy County School District in Leslie, Arkansas, and all the other child beating educators in America, you, are a weapon carrying bully and I can prove it in their own handbook and by their own admission it states a weapon is any instrument capable of causing bodily harm causing bodily harm bodily harm it wasn't originally invented for use on school children this was actually a tool for beating slaves um, the idea was to have something that would inflict terrible pain without causing the kind of serious permanent tissue damage um, that could, of a whip that could lower slaves' market value. For uh, school personnel to receive any professional training in how to paddle students, they're not required beforehand to demonstrate their competence at doing it safely and judiciously. They don't get their paddles inspected normally or held any standards of size, weight, composition, or craftsmanship, and least of all, measure the velocity of their swing, so we shouldn't really be surprised when something like this causes bruises like the ones shown in the pictures around here. In our schools in Alabama, we have nothing to protect our children. My son Peyton, he's 12, he's in the seventh grade at Plainview School in DeKalb County, Alabama. Um, in October, he came home from school and he told me, he said, um, Mom, I got a paddling today. And I said, okay, uh, what for? Because I'm saying okay because corporal punishment is something we do at my school. I say my school because I went to school for 13 years myself. I was paddled as a senior, an 18-year-old woman. My male principal paddled me because I skipped school. First of all, I was 18. I didn't even have to go to school. Second of all, it was my first day I had missed my whole entire senior year, and it was May. I had a few weeks to my graduation, so me and my girlfriends decided we would have a little fun. Okay, well then, my page, he said, Mom, he said, my bottom hurts really, really bad because he got me again today. And he said, can you look at it because it hurts really bad? And I said, yeah. Peyton's 12, 
Most 12 year old boys are not showing their bottoms to their moms. Mm -mm. But he was in so much pain, he showed me his bottom. Peyton was beaten black and blue. Um, he had a lot of broken blood vessels in his butt. You can see the paddle mark all the way around, perfect, where the teacher had hit him. Mind you, this teacher is 450 pounds plus, ex-football player, a college football player. He is a calf roper, so he's a very strong man. He calls my son out to the hall because he didn't pass his like science test. say something to students. Uh, there are people in this world that care about you and that want to make sure that you're being treated with equal civil, constitutional, and human rights. And that's why we're here today. And the other thing is, you know, you have a right to integrity of your body. You don't have to allow someone to do that to you. How are they supposed to respect a person that's out in the hallway hitting their classmate, number one, and whipping out these big paddles? They have them hanging, right, Angie, in your, in your school? The paddles are hanging near the teacher's desk on the wall. They take them out of their drawer. They've got these big old wooden paddles with holes drilled in them for, I guess, to hit the kid harder. And some of them even have the children sign the paddle after they felt the sting, which I think is really sick. They beat them like they're men, because another point. It's so sad, but it's true, that there are some sick people in this world that take pleasure in punishing others through physical pain. And it really is sexual abuse. I, I have so much respect for Mr. Mark Echo for sponsoring the rally today and standing up and taking a, a position and speaking out for our school children. What we need to do is get the kids involved. We need to publicize this, raise awareness, put it on MTV or Nickelodeon News or what, you know, something where the kids can be involved. Because when other children in these 30 states, more than half the nation, learn that this is still going on and that kids are being subjected to this kind of treatment in their schools, they'll come out in force and stand up for them. I was in class and I, we were going through the class and he gave our test back and he said, if you didn't make high enough on the test, go out in the hall. Well, I didn't make high enough on the test and I went out in the hall and then he lectured us uh, about how he was beaten and how his kid, he beat his kids and how he was going to beat us. Well, uh, he lectured us for a long time and he asked us what our parents would do and uh, he said, well, let's go. And he took us into a, another teacher's classroom and he pouted us. And, uh... What was that experience like for you? I mean, did uh, it make you feel like doing your science uh, studies more or what happened? Uh, well, it, it kind of made me want to study harder so I didn't get beaten again. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. Uh, do you think that's a good way for children to learn because they're afraid that something's going to happen to them? No. Okay. What do you think he could have done differently? Uh, he could have made us retake the test. Do you still have that same teacher? Yes. Okay. Well, how do you feel around him? Weird. Weird, huh? Okay. Children get whipped every day by officials from the school staff, uh, principals, uh, you know, counselors, and they don't do them nothing, absolutely nothing. But us as a parent to try to uh, correct them, well, they're ready to chain us up and put him in, you know, in jail. So come and help us join now, Paula Flo from the Hitting Stops here, to stop this beating of our children, of your children. And there's nothing you can do about it. So come and join us and make the, co the Congress stop this, this corporal punishment. They don't get to learn because their mentality, after getting whipped by this big old paddle that our parents, that my parents, after 50 years never hit me with, now they want to hit our children. Now, do you think it's fair? Honestly, do you think, would you like to be beaten with one of these pedals? And don't come up with, well, maybe what they did. No, it doesn't matter what they did. The fact is, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. So I really honestly want you to join us and help us stop this beating of these children that are beaten every day. 
constantly, every minute of the hour for each school. This happens in our school, in Wharton County, Texas. This happens, there's not one time or one day that doesn't go by that the principals, the teachers get the pleasure of beating our children, and it's beating, okay? It's not paddling, it's beating. Mm -hmm. Honestly, parents, Y'all need to really realize and open your eyes and actually see what's uh, actually going in the state of Texas with these schools. Yeah, I didn't have a bike helmet when I was growing up and some safety devices. And it makes sense over time that we evolve and we change our policy. You make it a kinder and gentler policy has been talked about before. And relations that have more compassion and appreciation for the individuals and where, where they're coming from mm -hmm. and have a more nurturing and positive experience for the educational system of the United States of America in all of, all of its territories and all of its states and make it a, a positive, fun, exciting experience to go right. to school to learn mm -hmm. and to have friends and to feel safe because that's what it's really supposed to be about. Right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Me, one this guy here, I know him very well. I did holding the sign supporting. He's a skateboardist. He fall off his skateboard, and I mean, he have mass bruises. But your children should not go to school and return home with bruises on their buttocks like this guy have falling off the skateboard. He has an excuse. He a, fall off the skateboard. You're an adult. But your children your chi they don't should have a not voice. come home with bruises no. like this guy. No. Yes. That has to be yes. <laughs> That's right. And I've seen them. <laughs> Just because a teacher is allowed to wield a paddle and beat you at any point in time, it's okay. Another story I have is uh, one of my relatives, when uh, he was in gym, it came about the end of the year. And the coach, at, you know, went up and he asked everybody, said, all right, so everybody here, who hasn't been paddled this year? And well, the person I know, he, he thought, oh, I'm going to get rewarded. And he stuck his hand up. All right, get up here and touch your toes. Teachers are allowed to beat you just for their own amusement. I mean, people are saying, oh, this is good for them. They need, they need it and it helps them structure. Really? I mean... You beat them multiple times, you think, you know, it's not doing anything. It's obviously ineffective. Why allow a system that's ineffective to keep going on? It's wasting our time and it's causing pain and suffering and irreparable damage. Thank you. Raywood, how would you feel if, you know, out of a hundred boys in your school your age, maybe five of them were beaten and you were one of them? How would you feel looking at the ones who were not beaten? Well, I mean... I feel, I mean, kind of embarrassed, but the one that I, the thing that I hate them, like the thing that I feel the most is, um, I'd really hate that teacher. I'd really hate the person who beat me. Right. And right. Uh, I mean, make you want to come back for revenge later on, right? Uh, like you know, you hear about kids shooting up schools and stuff. It's probably, I mean, After you never, yeah. Maybe they did get paddled when they were little, and maybe it did scar them to, the to want to get revenge. Uh -huh. yeah. That are getting beaten in our schools, and the people behind the doors that you're looking at over here are the people that are allowing them to get beaten. Mm -hmm. My experience in the last few days here at the Capitol has been very disappointing. It's been mm -hmm. very disappointing in trying to get um, cooperation, support from anybody in this building has been nearly impossible. Thank goodness for Representative Donna Howard. She was brave enough, courageous enough to be the one person in this building that I found to let us be here today. Many, many representatives' offices that I went to feel like it's okay for our kids to be beaten in our schools, which is funny that their kids that attend Austin school districts don't get beaten. So why our capital city is not allowing it, but allowing all other cities around for it to happen in all other cities around is beyond me. And it's been very frustrating, and I'm so glad that my, these kids here are courageous enough to come to the Capitol and, and take a stand. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Angie. Thanks. All right.